everyone. I'm Margaret Miller. I'm senior instructor of viola and chamber music here at Colorado State University. Today I'll be playing both excerpts for Allstate Orchestra next February with a couple of practice tips for you, and then um, also have a couple of tips about practicing the scales at the end. So I thought I would start with the Brahms excerpt. Both of these are standard orchestral excerpts. You'll find them on the Fort Collins symphony list, on just about any audition list on any, for any orchestra in the country. The challenge here, because it's Brahms, it's a, a lot about the rhythm. It's 6-8, but Brahms tends to do some really interesting things with rhythm. So for this excerpt, and certainly the Mendelssohn, make sure that you've got a comfortable metronome marking. I would aim in this movement on the Brahms to be a little bit on the slower side, more on the 58 side to the dotted quarter. It's a very beautiful excerpt that really features the viola section. So along with making sure you're counting really well and have your metronome on, be mindful of other details too while you're working on rhythm and pitch. For instance, he writes piano espressivo at the beginning, so that's a warmer piano sound than the piano that you're going to have in measure five, which is more of an accompanying piano. And if you noticed, I did a little tiny crescendo into measure four just to lean towards the top part of the phrase to allow it to relax into the piano. So being expressive means finding a good fingering. There are lots of different options, and I know you'll all come up with some really terrific ones. This is a fingering that I've, I've used for many, many years, and for me, it works really well. I feel like I can vibrate on notes that I need to vibrate on. So at measure 311, these last two lines in particular, I would strongly encourage you to have your metronome on in eighth notes. And also take your pencil and mark where the beginning of the bar is and where the middle of the bar is. So if you're, and who knows, you may even wanna try some conducting with this too. So I'm gonna start in measure 311. So here's my pulse. See if you can feel the big beats even when he disturbs that pulse. Hopefully on the second hearing, it'll be a little bit clearer for you. So a couple of other thoughts about hairpins. The one on the third line, that's the biggest one. He doesn't tell you how big to get with that hairpin, but the range of the orchestra is really huge at this point. So I think it could be a good, nice warm Brahms mezzo forte kind of sound. And then the crescendo that happens in 317, remember it goes all the way to the subito piano. So that can be a tricky thing. You might want to circle that subito piano. And if you noticed that during the crescendo, each hairpin got a little bit bigger, so they weren't all the same. It really helps the phrasing. So next we'll go to the Mendelssohn excerpt. Again, it's really important to find a good practice metronome tempo 
for your individual rhythm work and also for pitch because amazingly enough, this is quite challenging to play in tune. So I would lean more towards the low end, lower end of the metronome marking that you've been given. 76 is plenty fast enough. You wanna make sure it's very clean, it's very clear and light. If you'll notice, other than piano and pianissimo, those are the only dynamics that you have. You have some crescendi and you have some hairpins, but nothing really gets very big in terms of sound. And that's one of the big challenges with this particular excerpt. So if you've got your pencil handy, go ahead at letter B, mark piano there. It's one of the challenges when you're given an excerpt that doesn't start at the beginning, you really have to know what the context is. So you get to start piano and then you make a crescendo and then about eight, nine bars later, there's the stupido piano. So this kind of bow stroke, because of the speed, you can't really do a true spiccato. So it's what I call a stick bounce. It sounds like the, bow's the hair's coming off the string, but really the hair's staying on the string and the stick is doing the bouncing. Every bow is going to be a little bit different where that spot is. So if you notice on my bow, it's actually a little closer to the middle. And remember, stay very relaxed. Just because you're playing fast doesn't mean your bow arm tightens up or your bow hand. So here's the Mendelssohn. <laughs> So if you notice, my bow is not coming off the string. It's just staying right in place. So you'll need to experiment on open strings. This is a great open string exercise that you can do. So find that sweet spot because once you've got that, your bow doesn't need to travel very far. So a couple of details. And the Sforzandi, they're not Beethoven Sforzandi. These are very soft, they're little stings. Sometimes you can do it with a length of bow. So it doesn't have to be a really sharp attack like you would in Beethoven. And then between C and D, it's really important that you pay attention to the hairpins. We get very good at going up but sometimes we're not so aware about coming back down to the original dynamic. So yes, it has to be soft, but you wanna make sure that you still have real clarity from your bow. Here's the start of the excerpt once more. <laughs> note is just a 16th note. If you give it just a little wiggle of vibrato, it will ring. So again, finding a comfortable metronome marking. When you go slower, of course, you won't be able to necessarily do this kind of stick bounce, but it will help you make sure that it's really in tune. And again, as far as fingerings go, you know, I've come up with a couple over the years and I decided on that third line there just to play it in first position. One of my teachers used to say, when in doubt, play in first position. The sound is always going to be better than up in a higher position. And because of the tempo, it'll save you a shift or two. You'll have more string crossings, but at least you'll be in one position. 
Letter C, this is, I've been working on this a lot, and I've worked on these excerpts quite a lot when I was younger, and it's always interesting to me when I come back to them to see how they feel. This one. <laughs> It's very challenging to play this in tune because of the key. Those quarter note E flats with the accent give it a little sting, but not a lot of bow. Otherwise, you'll be late on the next six, 16ths. That will help a lot. So give it a little sting. Vibrato can help with that gesture as well. And just make sure you're giving shape. You're always showing shape to the phrase. So it's about being rhythmic for both of these excerpts, about being really in tune and as clean as you can be. So often for orchestra excerpts, like for all state orchestra, there'll be a fast excerpt and a melodic excerpt, just so the committee that's going to be hearing your recordings has a sense of what you can do in both of those situations. So as far as the scales go, I trust you, you all have good fingerings for these scales. One thing that's going to help again with the speed factor, you know it has to be at 80 for F major and the E minor scale. I would back that up two to four clicks on your metronome just to make sure it's consistently in tune. And then when you want to work on the slurs, so certainly you can play without slurs. <laughs> Helps a lot, but then when you want to add the slurs in, something that will help your left hand out is, say you're trying to do three slurred before you do six. That really helps your fingers know where they're going before you play, and it also helps your bow to know how much you need for each note. So for six, so that can be a nice helpful tip for working in the slurs. And you'll be amazed at how quickly you can get up to 80 to the dotted quarter. For the chromatic scale, again, personal preference on the fingering. Um, so you can, there's a couple of options you can do, but make sure again that your left hand is really moving very cleanly. I like to think of these as little micro shifts. In fact, if I've only got two minutes to warm up, I'll play two octave chromatic scales. So I have the sense of doing little tiny micro shifts. So it sounds very clean and not mushy. For me, it's, that's my third finger. So I wish you all the best on making your tape, and I look forward to seeing a lot of you next February. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for watching this Colorado All-State Prep video. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit music.colostate.edu for more information, including the opportunity to schedule an individual visit with the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. Good luck on your audition.